six minutes to tell you about polynomial functors, a few essential things. Okay, so so um, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to abandon that hope altogether because there's a few things I really want you to keep in mind when you watch um, the next set of videos, which will be uh, lecture two of this and go through this book. There's a few things, though, that I think will clue you in to avoid some common, some easy mistakes. Um, okay. Um, so polynomials here, we're dealing with mappings from set to set. Um, and um, these polynomials form uh, this sort of a form. And, and they shouldn't be too foreign. Like, like some of these things we've been dealing with are polynomials. Like maybe it's a polynomial, it's one plus A. One represents nothing. A is just you know, the data type. So we have an int or we have nothing. This plus can be read as kind of, or we have that, right? It's a disjoint union uh, in sets and something similar in Haskell. It's like a tagged union or disjoint union. Pair is like this, which we could think of as A squared. A list is polynomial functor. It's just that one plus A plus A squared plus A cubed. This is like one, you can have nothing. It can be empty or it can just be an int or you know a list of int can be empty or it can be a, an int, a single int or it can be an int comma int, namely a pair of int and int, that's a square, or it can be an int comma int comma int, which is a cube. So these are polynomial functors. Don't let them scare you. Um, and in general, you can have these sort of things. So this would be, oh yeah. So this is like y squared. We could think of y squared as, as a pair of y and y, or we could think of it as adding up y, y, times, um, just adding it together, y times, uh, y values um, uh, of, of, uh, of y. These are mappings from set to set, OK? And um, uh, you may, um, it may be worth thinking, emphasizing that when we have sets here, um, as we commonly think of them, we could think of this as like a disjoint union of A and A here. It's like we could have an A or we could have a B on um, the set AB. AC, we could have a, an A or we can have a C, okay? So that's how I prefer to think of kind of like these co-products. Pairs, meanwhile, would be, um, would be kind of parents. You need both of them. You don't have a choice which you have. You have you need both of them. You need an A and you need a B. And um, it turns out there's this very nice structure here um, uh, for each of them. And I'll come back to this point, but we have these special things like initial objects here, which are the empty set. Um, uh, and we have terminal objects here, which are the, uh, uh, which are this uh, unit, um, uh, this uh, unit, unit here. Um, Okay, uh, just a few uh, key factoids. So we're gonna be operating with these uh, polynomial functors, these mappings from set to set. Uh, in Hask, it's gonna be like from types to types, um, but here it's gonna be set to set. And uh, we're gonna be having these functors, which, which are just kind of written as polynomials. Just remember, each of these things is a set. And if we have like Y plus Y, we'll call it, 2y, but really it's it's y plus y. You could think of that equivalently as like being a bool, uh, comma y. So for for true, we have one set of um, possibilities, and and for false, we have that same set of possibilities here. Um, we have twice as many possibilities because we have this true or false in the first argument. Or you could think of it as y plus y. But these are sets. And we could either be from this set or we could be from that from this set. Um, so when we have something like a polynomial here, uh, y squared plus y plus one, that's just going to map like a set, say a, a set consisting of just a, um, into a set consisting of where you have your choice. That's why there's a plus of either an a comma a, that's the y squared, um, 
a pair of whatever set this was, or of A, the set itself, or of one, which is like the singleton object. It just, it just is. Um, and uh, we couldn't have an empty set here because we can't get a stinking empty um, set, but, um, but we could have uh, these, these possibilities, okay? Um, so uh, here we have these as, um, as possible values within the set. I take that back about the empty set. I'd have to think about that. But here it maps out. So B would be mapped to BB comma B or this. We have, these are the possibilities is what this is saying with the pluses. So we plug in a set and we get out a set of possibilities. We can choose this one or this one or this one. Um, and where you see the exponents, it's like multiplications or multiplications are like tuples of them. So C goes to that and, and we lift morphisms. This morphism from A to B is gonna now map an A, this set to this one. How are we gonna map, this is important, for understanding th those videos. How are we gonna map this set to this set? Well, man, if we have to map this set into this set, remember what a function has to do. It has to specify for each of these values exactly one thing it maps to. So we could map this AA, this thing that came from that Y squared, that could be mapped into B, it could be mapped into the singleton, or we could choose to map it into BB. Um, we'd have to pick one of them it maps to. Which is the one it's going to map to? Well, we'll see that that's a very important question um, within the context of this um, uh, of of the polynomial functors course. Uh, but it maps to one of these guys here. Um, each of these maps to one of these, um, and um, and and that will be the lifting of this function. It's going to map this set over into this end. It has to do it for each possible value here, has to be mapped to some specific value here. Um, and uh, the lifting of this function would dictate which it, uh, which it maps to. Okay, um, and there's gonna be an application of the UNA dilemma um, that's gonna pop out. Um, where we're considering this, uh, this is lecture two, where we're considering this mapping um, in poly uh, from, uh, from this set uh, to, to this set. And it turns out it's just like in the United you know, Lemma where we could plug in, this is like, sorry, uh, um, this is like uh, f of, of a here, um, essentially. I won't go into it, but this is like f of a. Uh, so, so they do this kind of UNADA, apply this UNADA lemma uh, just to realize that um, this guy is nothing more than, than this thing. And you, don't, you could just recognize, oh, that, okay, so the UNADA lemma is being applied. I'll, I'll trust that. But then that allows for them to define further mappings. Um, so a lot of what we're going to be dealing with in lecture two is these sort of systematic mappings from one polynomial to another. And that'll be um, uh, involved this sort of reasoning about where, where we're mapping each of these possible elements to. Like the first element of P where it goes to, the second element of P where it maps to, uh, et cetera. Okay, so those are a few essentials uh, about this. Um, uh, these polynomials, the mappings between them uh, will be um, interesting objects and we'll soon see that um, we could start think of it as kind of delegation, um, delegation of responsibility and uh, we're going to see that dynamical systems um, can be can be uh, characterized in this way, and mappings between polynomials, and in fact between monomials, can be associated with wiring diagrams. 
And the wiring diagrams can be associated with dynamical systems. Although in this case, for simplicity, we're dealing with uh, discrete uh, dynamical systems. So things like finite state machines and so on. And we'll see lenses come back in uh, at some point. So um, those are a few uh, pointers. So I'd like you for next time, um, in addition to watching this initial video, I'd like you to look at lecture two uh, of this course. Be aware it's a little bit fainter, so you may have to listen with headphones on. Um, and I'd like you to read sections. I think I asked you to read these sections already through there, I think through 1.4, 1.5. So I'd like you to read 2.2 to 2.4 of this book. Um, and uh, that'll be for Friday. And we'll go into this uh, lecture two in more detail and we'll see these different ways of representing these polynomials um, and these ways of kind of mapping between them uh, that we'll be seeing. Okay, um, so that's all for today. Thank you for very fast paced uh, coverage of representables, UNADA and uh, just a little bit on polynomial functors and I will see you Friday. Thank you.